This lesson deals with an RC switching circuit that uses a single pole double throw switch. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 7, starting on page 9. Suppose we have the circuit shown here and want to solve for the current in this resistance. Using our algorithm from chapter 7 for solving first order differential equations with a single capacitance, the first step was to formulate the equations. Well, I'm only solving for the current I of x here, so it would be some a plus b times e to the minus t minus t0 over tau. But because t0 is 0, just e to the minus t over tau. Step 2 is to find the pre-switching conditions of your variable. What is the value of I sub x at 0 minus? Now, because it's the current in a resistance, it can jump instantaneously from one value to another as you pass through 0. But I know the capacitor voltage can't. So even though I'm not solving for this voltage as a function of time, I do need to know what is the initial condition of this capacitor voltage. I'm going to find that by finding the voltage across the capacitance just before the switch switches from the first position to the second. So here we have our schematic with the capacitance in a circuit for a very, very long time, and we treat that as an open circuit. So we're going to analyze this circuit and figure out what this voltage is. And when this switch switches, this voltage will stay the same just for a brief instant of time. The voltage here is just be the voltage across this 60K resistor. Just use our voltage divider rule of 60,000 over 60,000 plus 20,000 times 40 volts, and you get 30 volts. What's the current flowing in here? Well, since there's no current in this 8K resistance, the current in this direction is going to be the 75 volts divided by the total resistance of 160K plus 40K which is 200k. But our actual current I sub x is in the other direction, so I have to change the sign of that. That turns out to be 375 microamps. So step three of our algorithm then is to find the initial condition of our variable of interest, in this case I sub x of 0 plus. So what is the value of this current here? Well, I'm going to use the fact that when the switch flips from this position to this one, that the 30 volts that was here prior to that is still here. Now this may change very rapidly, but as we pass through zero, this cannot jump instantaneously unless we supply an infinite current, and we just can't do that. If I could solve for the voltage V sub x here, then I could solve for the current by dividing by the resistance. So let's sum the currents at this node. I'm going to assign the currents any way you want to. I'm going to assign the current in this direction because that's the thing I'm solving for, but these other two you could do in any way you want to. I've got current entering equals current leaving. So current leaving here would be V sub x over 160K. The current at entering is going to be this voltage, which is 30 volts minus V sub x divided by 8K. And then the current in this direction is going to be this node voltage, which is minus 75 minus V sub x. So I have one equation now and one unknown. Multiply through by 160,000, so this becomes 20. I'm going to cancel with the 8K. And then with the 40K, that becomes 4. So that gives me 600 minus 20 V sub x minus 300 minus 4 V sub x. So we've got 24 V sub x minus, bring it over here, add 1, 25 V sub x equals 600 minus 300 or 300. So V sub x is 300 divided by 25, 12 volts. And the current I sub x then is 12 volts divided by 160K, which is 75 microamps. Again, this is the thing we're solving for, and this is going to be equal to A plus B times E to the 0. So it's just a plus b. So in one equation, two unknowns. I need another one. It's our step four. When t approaches infinity, really more than five time constants, this capacitance again looks like an open circuit. I'm going to find the current now in this resistance. Because I have an open circuit here, I really have, like I had in one of my previous steps, no current in this resistance. So the current that's flowing in this direction is the 75 volts divided by the 200k. But again, my I sub x is the other way. So it turns out here that this step 4 was our step 2 result. This again is going to be a plus b times e to the minus infinity, which is just equal to a. I can now solve for b. Step 5 is to find the Thevenin resistance. And again, this is going to be for the circuit after the switch has changed state. So here I've got this part here, source set equal to 0, source set equal to 0. This is really disconnected. You really could just not even draw that. Let's just leave it there for now. Looking back from the terminals of the capacitance, I see 40K in parallel with 160K, and that's in series with 8K. Product over sum is 32K, 40K total. And again, the product of R and C has units of seconds, so 40,000 times 0.2 micro is 8 milliseconds. 
Now we can find the solution. We found that A plus B is 75 microamps. We found that A was minus 375 microamps. So now B is going to be equal to 75 minus A. So it's a minus a minus the 375 micro. That's 450 micro. So my general form of the solution then is for T less than zero at 375 microamps negative of x and then for t greater than zero I have a plus b times e to the minus t over tau. Now when you let t equal zero you have 375 micro negative plus 450 micro positive so I did have a jump in current. Start out at minus 375 microamps and then the difference of these two is 75 microamps and then in five time constants I will change to this value. 5 time constants would be 5 times 8 or 40. So this is a really a crude sketch here. Not super precise, but you get an idea what the shape looks like. I expect you to be able to draw things like this as you work through problems in the course. You'll see spikes like this in all kinds of transistor circuits where the switch is the transistor. It's important to be able to make these kind of sketches and get a rough approximation as to what we're looking at. This is solving an RC circuit with a switch. 